Hearthstone just released a brand new Mokto boot right before Mocktober, so it's been one of the most requested boots for this Mocktober that's slowly spilling over into Mockvember and potentially Mock Simber, if we're being honest. So we thought we'd not only run it through our regular gauntlet of tests and cut it in half to see what's inside, but also really put it to the test by directly comparing it to the king of the Moktos, the Red Wing 875s, to really see how good this Grantstone boot is. And thanks to Grantstone for sponsoring this video and sending us these boots. And people keep asking where Toaster is. He's still alive and fine. And I'm currently trying to bait him into coming into this video because if you've ever had a cat, you know that you cannot force a cat to do anything. So if Toaster decides to show up for this video, I guess you'll find out. So now I'll start going through the details of this boot, starting with what this boot is first, because it is a really unique boot. Because it's not your classic work mock toe boot. It's not quite your dressy mock toe boot like the Alden Indies. It's this unique fusion of what Grant Stone does best by making the more refined, high-end, dressier work boots, combining it with this unique, um, it's almost like the, the Eastern bird hunting mock toe boots you see with like Russell Moccasins and some of those flatland hunting boots, combined with the unique ruggedness of a more heritage mock toe boot. So that's really what intrigued me about this video and what we're gonna put this whole video through the lens of that positioning of this product. So now let's start with the leather first and I chose the veg tan leather because they have a lot of other leathers. They have got a bison leather, they've got some black T-core leathers. They got a bunch of unique stuff, but there's not very many boot makers out there actually using a true veg tan leather. So I wanted to highlight this one. And this is a Carlo Badalassi veg tan Minerva leather. Badalassi, if you don't know, is, is known for some of the highest quality Italian made veg tan leathers. And if you don't know what a vegetable tan leather is, it's a more unique style of tanning leather that's different from what you usually see in probably 95% of boots. Because most boots are tanned with a chrome tanning process. Where they take that raw hide that would just decay and rot if you just left it on treated, they convert it into leather that doesn't um, rot by a chrome tanning process where they use chromium salts to quickly convert that flesh into leather, making it so it doesn't rot. But that's a newer process of tanning leather. It's only been around for, I think, just over 100 years. But the way that they've tanned leather basically since the dawn of time and since man has been wrapping his feet in leather is through some form of natural tanning process, especially the vegetable tanning process. And so the way they do this is a lot longer of a process, but it's a lot more pure of a process. It doesn't involve chromium salts that could potentially pollute the environment that are a harsh chemical that might react to your skin. It's all tanned over a slow, long period of time with compounds derived from a lot of tree barks and natural tannins and compounds that are all really natural ways of converting rottable flesh into non-rottable leather. And so that's why it's so unique and rare because it can take three to nine months to do a vegetable tanning process versus chrome tan can take three or four days. So it's not necessarily better than chrome tan, and a lot of people would argue chrome tan's better for a lot of situations like work because you don't have to condition as much, it's not quite as a, uh, you don't have to baby it quite as much as a vegetable tan leather, but when it comes to dress your boots in this really high-end boot world, vegetable tan leather is one of those leathers that's really unique because it's so expensive and hard to, hard to make boots out of, and because when you're really making boots at scale, chrome tanning is the way to do it. So that's why I wanted to focus on this, just to give you a little insight into veg tan versus chrome tan, and also to show you a true vegetable tan leather boot, because it's pretty rare. So now that you know what this leather is, we want to do the flame test to show you the difference, and as you can see, as we burned this vegetable tan leather, it doesn't quite have that same flame resistance as a really oily and uh, conditioned chrome tan leather, but you can tell from the burn test that there's no heavy plastic coating on top. It is of the most natural leather that we've cut apart in a really long time. And then if you look at the cross section to make sure that this is a true full grain vegetable tan leather, you can see how thick that slab of grain is that gives the structural strength to leather. And then we also put the macro lens on the top coat of the leather to make sure it's actually a full grain leather and not that hasn't been sanded. And as you can see, you can see all the little pores, you can see where the hairs were pulled out. So this is a really high quality full grain vegetable tan leather that doesn't have any plastic coating, no fake print. So to me, this is pretty clearly an A-grade leather. And it's it's up there with my favorite leathers because I just, I love the way Veg Tan is. It's harder to break in. It's a pain to break in. Like their Bison version of this is way easier to break in than this, but it is a really unique leather. And it's about two millimeters thick. So right around that casual boot thickness, not quite up to like the three millimeters, like the really heavy work boots. So how does that compare to the Red Wings? Well, the 875s, this is about 2.2 to 2.4 millimeters thick. And we wanted to run both of these on the puncture test to see how they performed. So we did the Red Wings first and it took 74 pounds to pierce through just the upper 
leather. And then we did the vegetable tan leather on these granite stones and it took 46 pounds. So that one actually surprised me because I thought veg tan would be a little bit more puncture resistant because of how hard it is. But it is a little bit thinner so that might be why it was a little bit easier to puncture through. But when you're comparing these two leathers, ultimately they're around the same quality but a lot of people would rather have actually no it's not even true because some people would rather have a veg tan because of how unique it is and some people would rather have the chrome tan because of how easy it is to maintain and the unique characteristics of a chrome tan leather so to me they're on par but i would say most it's a, it's a tough one because i really like veg tan leather but it's mostly because of the unique things that don't actually add a whole lot of durability or advantages to the leather it's mostly an aesthetic change so i would say they're pretty on par with a slight advantage on the Grant Stones Veg 10 leather. And then if we start moving to the inside of the boot, you can see that the shaft of the boot is unlined and that there is a counter cover that's the flesh out counter cover. So I'm assuming they take the lining leather, flip it like we've seen in a lot of the boots to give you a little bit more friction on your heel so that your heel doesn't slip up a bunch while you're breaking these in, giving you blisters. And it's nice that it's leather because as you've probably seen in your own footwear, if it's just a fabric piece, it's only a matter of a few months before you've worn through that. So it's good to have leather in there. And comparing that to the Red Wings, the Red Wings also have a flesh out counter cover. So pretty much the same there. And the actual lining leather itself, they both seem like they're pretty decent leather. You know, the, the Red Wings, I have it cut in half, is more of like a nubuck leather whereas the grant stones are more full grain leather the, the grant stones is a little bit nicer leather but at the end of the day it is a lining but technically the grant stone does have a better lining leather than the red wings then next if we look at the insoles so the grant stones have a full veg tan insole but unlike the red wings that also have a full veg tan insole they've got a little bit of a sock liner at the heel that has foam right underneath of it to give you just a little bit more squish underneath your heel and one big complaint I had with the Aldens was that they have that same patch but it doesn't go all the way across your heel and it's cut off at a 90 degree angle it's not skived down like the Grant Stones are so every time you're wearing those boots you can feel those hard edges all around that piece of foam which to me just doesn't actually add to the comfort it just makes them more uncomfortable so in the Grant Stones the fact that it goes all the way across the width of your heel and is skived down to where you can't actually feel that transition that was a huge benefit for me because if it was like the all Indies, I'd rather just not have a soft liner like in the red wings but because it's skived down it actually adds to the comfort i really like the grant stones and then if we move to the actual mock toe itself so this like i mentioned is really similar to some of those bird hunting and light flatland hiking boots that you see in the eastern united states with russell moccasins and i think yucatan yucatan i don't know whatever they're called where they have the three-piece mock toe because the Red Wings, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about with a one-piece, two-piece, or three-piece mock toe, go watch the Everything You Need to Know About Mock Toe Boots on the Rose Ramble 2 channel. I'll put it in the cards in the description so you can go check that out because we go through all this in long, rambly detail. So the Grant Stones look like it's a three-piece mock toe where you've got the top piece, you've got the side piece, and then you've got this extra bumper piece that wraps around and potentially underneath the boot if it's a true moccasin. So we wanted to see if it is a true three piece. So we cut the little bumper here to see if it's doubled up or if it's skived down and it's just layered over top of each other like a fake toe cap. And we cut that and as you can see it, it isn't a, a true double layer. So this, this layer here stops where this layer begins. So technically it's not a true three piece mock toe, it is just a two piece mock toe. But a lot of that is not necessarily a difference in quality, it's just a matter of the styling. And technically, if this was a true double layer, it would be more durable than having it skived down. But you know, it's double stitched and it's a pretty common thing for these, these boots that are a half dress, half work, half rugged style to keep that and maintain that slim silhouette by doing that and skiving them down. Cause we've seen it with Thursdays with the toe caps. It's pretty common. Ultimately, I wish it had a double layer because it would just be really cool to have an extra layer to wear through at the toe. But one thing I do like is that this mock toe, it has a really clean finished edge, unlike the two piece mock toe on the Red Wing. Because this, this, this side piece, is sewn to the top u-shaped piece and it creates this little um this little seam right here that over time it will split and it just doesn't look quite as clean as this grant stone that's rolled over and then sewn so comparing the two when it comes to durability they're probably about the same but just aesthetically i i really dig the look of this it's really unique you know there's tons of boots out there with the mock toe just like this granted that and Obviously the Red Wings are the classic iconic mock toe. 
So stylistically, it's hard to really say which one's better, but I think both have their pros and cons that could sway you either way. And then if we move to the midsole, and this is where you really start to see some of the differences between the Grant Stones and your, your Red Wing in this, this price point of boots. With the Red Wings, you have a rubber midsole that is used to, to glue the outsole onto, whereas the Grant Stones, they have a full grain leather midsole, which is really unique because a lot of a lot of people will not necessarily cut corners, but choose rubber because it is cheaper and it binds a little bit better to rubber. But I do like the look and I like the durability and the the way that leather compresses to the shape of your foot that rubber never does so there's kind of pro, pros and cons to each technically the rubber midsole is going to bond better to the rubber outsole but you don't get the same benefits and attributes of a leather midsole so if i were to choose one i would just go with the leather because as you probably have noticed by this channel i like leather and more leather is usually more better for me then if we look at the outsole these outsoles are very similar because they're both this Christy style blown rubber outsole that gives you a lot of squish that is known to, for wearing out fairly quickly but the nice thing is they're really easy to resole but they're slightly different tread patterns you know not enough to really say which one's better i do like the fact that the grant stones have this like veg tan patch right in the middle i think that's kind of a cool touch but they're around the same thickness they're around the same consistency and we did a little shore a test on them and the grant stones were a 55 shore a the red wings came in at a 60 shore a so just a little bit harder on the red wings not really enough to say one's better than the other so you might get a little bit more squish out of the grant stones but they might wear out just slightly faster and the red wings might be a little bit harder underfoot but they might not wear out quite as fast but once again it's only five Five short a difference so it might even just be a difference in batch between the two and with the outsoles we want to do the outsole puncture test so the grant stones took 203.5 pounds to puncture through and the red wings took 209.5 so once again right in that same ballpark so the red wing is slightly more puncture resistant but both of them took right around 200 pounds to puncture through so both of them are fairly puncture resistant actually which kind of surprised me and then if we move to the final bit of information to go over with this boot the construction so this Grant Stone boot is a 360 degree Goodyear welted boot. So this stitch that you see wrapped all the way around this boot is the connecting stitch that attaches the upper of the boot to the outsole of the boot. And a lot of people really like the 360 Goodyear welt because it makes them really easy to resole. It's a really strong and hardy construction. You, you have to pull through glue and stitching to get this boot to come apart. So it is a very hardy and strong construction. How does that compare to the Red Wings? Well, it's the exact same with the Red Wings with a 360 Goodyear welt, but the difference is the stitch density. And that's kind of a bigger topic with this boot as well, because if you look at how many stitches per inch are on the welt on the Grant Stones compared to the Red Wings, you'll notice there's way more stitches on the Grant Stones. And when it comes to quality, it could be argued either way, which one's stronger, which one's more durable. But when it comes to a dressier boot, they a lot of these guys are making half dress, half work or half heritage boots. They maintain that really tight stitch, stitch density that dressier boots are known for because even if you look at the upper like look at the difference in how wide each of these stitches are on the red wing and how many stitches there are on the red wing compared to the grant stones so it is an aesthetic thing you know maybe it adds a little bit of extra structural strength because of how many extra stitches are on the grant stone but it, it is more of just like that taking this tight stitch density of dressier boots and combining it with the heritage look of a mock toe boot. So comparing the two, it's not it's not really a durability issue between the two, it's more of a style issue and honestly a price difference because if you think about how many rotations it takes to stitch all these stitches compared to the Red Wings, it's a more labor intensive process, especially with how many more stitches are on the Grant Stones. And usually I don't talk about that kind of stuff because I don't really care as much about it, but I thought it was worth mentioning because that is a very big distinguishing factor between the two because the Grant Stone is a really finely finished boot, especially compared to the more heritage and work inspired Red Wings. So that's everything we can know about this boot before we cut it in half. And that might have been like a 15 minute intro or first half of the video and toaster still hasn't shown up. So let's cut them in half and see what's on the inside and also incentivize toaster to hop on screen.
All right, we got it cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So it looks like the biggest difference between the Grant Stones and the Red Wings is the amount of leather in the construction. Because if you look at the counter, this is one thing that I love about Grant Stone is they use a full grain vegetable tan leather counter that we don't even see in boots until you get to that $600 Pacific Northwest price range. Because the Red Wings, they have a leather board counter which is ground up leather reconstituted into almost like a a cardboard of leather. A lot of people consider it better than like a celastic or plastic counter, but to me, a full green leather counter is undefeated because it's the strongest, it molds the shape of your foot, it takes forever to break in, but I consider it superior to leatherboard. And I think a lot of people would agree. And the Grant Stones also have a steel shank and a few extra layers of leather like we mentioned in the first half of the video. We got that full grain leather midsole you got the cork filling just like the red wings and you got that full grain leather insole just like the red wings but there are a couple synthetic materials in the grant stones because you have a little layer of fiberboard right underneath that veg tan right above the shank you know the toe stiffener is a synthetic count toe puff and the gemming that is attached to the bottom of the insole that the Goodyear welt stitch sews to the inside is also a canvas and fiberboard Gaming. So now that we've gone through every single detail of both these boots, what are the advantages and the differences in the Grant Stones? Well, you have the, the steel shank, you've got the leather midsole, you have the thick veg tan leather counter, you do have a little bit more of a lining and a better lining material, and you have the padded collar that is a better material, those barely count. And it is a little bit more of a roomy and generous last compared to the really narrow 875, but they do have a wider version, so go check out that video comparing the 875 to the 1907. So what are the advantages of the Red Wing though? So the Red Wing, it is cheaper, it's made in the United States. The insole is just a little bit thicker, but other than that, that's really the only advantages over the Grant Stones. So now, what do I think of this boot before we rank it on the Mocktober board. Well, I think it does exactly what we expected it to do. It combines the nearly perfect finishing details and the refined materials that Grant Stone is known for with the rugged style and the chunkiness of the heritage workwear world combined to make a really unique, very Grant Stone boot because it's so refined and so perfect in so many ways but still maintaining a lot of that ruggedness. And that's why it really intrigued me about this boot because Grant Stone has some other Moctos, but this one is truly unique amongst their lineup. So now is it worth the money? Because that's the big question, right? Because it's not a cheap boot. Well, if we compare it to the 875, there's there's clearly some differences in quality. The Grant Stone has more materials that are better and more leather and finer finishing techniques, but the, the Red Wings are also made in the United States. And so to me, the best way to tell if they're worth the money is find a boot that's similar for a little bit cheaper and a boot that's similar ish for a little bit more money in this Indonesian made boot that is up in the mid 400 price range. So looking at these two, I think the Grand Stone is pretty well clearly better than the Red Wings and there's certain things in the Indonesian made boots that are a little bit better like the hand welting, but also the Grant Stones have some materials and benefits that even these more expensive Indonesian made boots don't have like that thick veg tan counter and arguably better materials. So to me that, that shows me that they're well priced because we are compared it to an American made boot that's cheaper and another foreign boot that's made a little bit more expensive. So to me it's worth the money and it's priced fairly. So so now to the fun aspects, how does this rank on the Mocktober board? So right now we do have the Red Wing 1907 right at the very top. So no surprise, we gotta put the Grant Stones at the top. And I think that's pretty inarguable because it is better in almost every way than the Red Wings. It is more expensive, but the, the Mocktober board is based solely off of the quality materials. And we're gonna make a viewer submitted ranking system that we might do off just strict value. So you guys can tell us what you think the best value Mocto and Matusa board is. So if we have that done, I'll put it in the description so you guys can go rank them for yourselves and tell us which one you think is best. So let me know what you guys think. And if you have a pair of these, go to the comment section and leave your review down there because it's a great resource for people that, can, that want to know how they feel on foot and people's experiences. And just like all the other sponsored videos, if you think I got something wrong or you think I'm off on this, let me know specifically what you think I got wrong, like the material or what part of the analysis, not just that it's sponsored, um, what specifically do you think I was off on? Because that helps the channel, it helps me keep uh, these videos as, as true and honest as I can. And it's just interesting to see other people's opinions. So let me know below. And thanks again to Grant Stone for sponsoring this video. Check them out via the link in my description. And thank you guys for everything you do in supporting these videos, especially these sponsored videos, because they're the lifeblood 
upload to the channel and there's it's what's going to allow us to do the really cool things we have planned for 2023 so thank you guys see ya